when you think of traditional antitrust framework, whether it's in the United States or in other jurisdictions, and collusion, you think of competitors, right? So the first prerequisite that you have to think about is whether the blockchain involves competitors, whether you're dealing with firms that are at the same level of the supply chain, or whether you're dealing with firms that are vertically integrated, right? So your manufacturer and your customer, for example. From a collusion perspective, the antitrust laws are most concerned with competitors, if you've got a horizontal relationship. And so the concern that a U.S. regulator, the FTC, DOJ, or their counterparts in Europe or Asia, for example, may have is if the blockchain is being used by competitors who are on the same blockchain. So they are employing the technology to facilitate business, to share information let's say it's competitively sensitive information and they're using that information in a way that will reduce competition. And so for collusive purposes, you can think of two different types. One would be per se collusion, which would be like a cartel. So if the members of the blockchain are essentially using that to facilitate a conspiracy to reduce output or to increase price, the harder cases to prosecute or to investigate are where you might be sharing some information tacitly as a means to share competitively sensitive information. It's not express collusion, so they're not expressly agreeing to increase prices or reduce output. But by sharing the information and having access to the information, it might make it more likely that each of them will know what the other is doing in the marketplace. Similar to your gas stations across the street from one another, they're not talking to one another directly. But by having access to the information, the pricing for the gas, for example, or the pricing in the blockchain, you might be able to steer your behavior, your competitive behavior in one way or another.